monthly work plan looking forward. Take it as read. Any comments comments from staff? No. Take questions. Questions, please. Councillor Scott. Mr Chairman, I'd just like to, to um, get a bit of clarity around the Twyford um, move to a global consent. Have you got 100% buy-in to that, or is it a majority? It's 99.9%. I think there's one out of 70-odd. Uh -huh. memory, but virtually all of them. And have we been able to shift any of those direct takes out of the Raupuri into groundwater tanks? Uh, no, the, the, the trial hasn't been about moving. No, I understand you know. that, but if you're going to roster, then obviously a direct take has a different impact than a... Yes, it Do does. And so we haven't prescribed that in terms of how they operate. The irrigators have recognised that themselves uh, and part of the trial, and I should should... Be clear that this isn't a this isn't a um, an actual consent that's been mm. issued. It's a yep. virtual consent. Yep. So we've basically set up an environment to allow them to to see if they can operate themselves in that space. Um, but they recognise that getting out of direct um, take straight out of the ropery is is a better option. Mm. Uh, and so the trial is very much about making those sorts of things work uh, on the ground uh, within the global um, set. So. That, that's part and parcel of it. And certainly, I think, if it works, it's likely that they'll come back to, to shift their surface takes into uh, that semi-confined zone as, as groundwater takes. And just one other question around that, if I may, Mr Chairman. Is there any progress on exploring um, alternative water through a deep well for the unconfined aquifer? Uh, there is, so we, we're, it's part of the model development for the, the broader area. Um, we have to build a, what they call a geological model to, to underpin the numerical groundwater model. Uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of components to that. Uh, there's, there's a project called Leapfrog that GNS are running around looking at um, liquefaction risk that we've sort of tagged into the back end of. And then all, uh, another key part of it is understanding the depth uh, of the resource, the ground, the basement um, characteristics and whether it's water bearing uh, and whether there is actually anything beyond that. So part of the proposal has, has been with the technical group who are working up the bits of the model to advise on uh, the requirement uh, number and location of some deeper bores to address issues of geology, so what, what the profile is and then when you get down there is, is there a a, a resource that's that's able to be utilised. So that's that's underway, and then at the end of that, we'll we'll look at what what they would like to do and how much money we've got and what we can deliver. So that that's happening as we speak, and with the aim of having those holes in the ground, um, you know, this autumn. Uh, thank you, Councillor Belford. Uh, two questions. One on page ninety-seven. Uh, there's the reference to the. Uh, Comar report in the strategy. I think uh, uh, through Mr. Chairman uh, Mike, I, somewhere else in here, I think you reference the uh, that you have an agreement with Hastings and Napier as to developing a strategy on, on this. Is that a expensive process? And if so, are they contributing any funds to it? Um, well, the the initial part will be to to agree the the scope of it. That's I mean, yes, it is costing a bit of money, um, but it won't be significant in the in the scheme of things. Out of that, I'm anticipating that the development of the strategy will take quite a bit of time in in terms of years, probably two or three years. Um, <coughs> I would anticipate that there will need to be quite a lot of staff input from both of those organisations, um, and we would expect those costs to lie where they fall. Lie where they where they fall. Um, not sure about additional input in terms of consultancy or additional um, research at this stage, but certainly, you know, they're open to that sort of conversation. Okay. Uh, on page 98, the very top of that page, uh, I'm so looking forward to the April edition of Our Place, and I just wanted to let you know if it's a work in progress, I could offer some photos and illustrations for it. Other questions, Councillor Hewitt? 
I, I'm still supplementary to the Twyford um, issue. So Ian, there's been a, a lot of uh, negativity, obviously, and tensions with the Twyford growers for quite a long time. If you are to believe every, everything you read, Pauline Z's taking the um, credits for this global consent trial. Um, I'm just wondering if that's a good news story that we could be jumping on the bandwagon of a little bit sooner. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I guess potentially it is. Um, it is a good news story, um, and, and everybody will want to be part of the success of that and celebrating that, I'm sure, which is great. So from my perspective, it's good that the industry have, have stepped up and published their acknowledgement of that being a, a useful move. Um, uh, yeah, we, we probably could have got got in there a little bit earlier, but the reality is that this trial has, has the concepts only just started really, so we've only sort of just in the last week or so set up the telemetry systems. So it's very early in the piece. Um, so, yep, yep, we'll, we'll certainly um, make sure that we get recognition where recognition's due as, as we run through that process. Further questions? I have a comment. I um, don't know where Hort, Hort NZ even came in on this thing. I never even saw a sign of sight of them. So um, I'm quite amazed by that. Never don't read the news yesterday? Never don't read the news yesterday. I don't think any of their growers and Twyford do. The growers and Twyford certainly know that the Regional Council solved this problem. Very good. <coughs> Are you happy to move that we accept the report, uh, Councillor Graham, on that fine note of endorsement of... Uh, what we're doing, seconded by uh, Councillor Belford. Thank you. you. Wish to speak further? Wish to speak? Any speakers? Put the motion. All those in favour, please say aye. Contrary, no. Carried. Uh, minor items. Councillor Belford, Deloitte. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, 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 confirm in the in the group here that our conversation uh, the other day that indicated the uh, I had raised a previous meeting councillor input uh, into people or or focus areas for the Deloitte uh, crew to take a look at uh, and I guess we agreed to disagree as to how that might proceed um, uh, but you did indicate that the the business case to be put forward by H. Brick would be a public document, and that the Deloitte review of it would be a public document. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. MPI, Council Bill. Uh, MPI. Um, as a private individual, I made an Information Act request for a a report done for MPI about the economic viability. Uh, of the uh, of the dam scheme, and that was rejected by MPI. It's been appealed to the ombudsman, uh, and in the interest of us amassing all the relevant information that we could have before us as a council about the scheme, uh, I would ask the council to consider uh, endorsing my uh, request as it sits before the ombudsman today. Thank you. Thank you. Do homework on that. Councillor Scott, Māori Charter. Um, Mr. Question um, regarding the Māori Charter as to how widely that has been distributed. Um, I understand that some copies have been sent around, but I think perhaps it would be a good idea to ensure that every councillor um, has actually... Um, received a copy of that, even if they um, are not a new councillor, just to make show that everyone is familiar with the terms of it, and that all members of the Māori Committee too have, a, have received a copy, because that charter clearly lays out the responsibilities of, of um, both the um, Māori members of the committee and what their responsibility are, and that it is their tucky and the responsibility of councillors on that role. Um, there are, I know there are a number of councillors appointed to it, but from time to time there are also alternates, so I think everyone needs to be aware of their responsibilities should they find themselves in a position on that committee. Thank you. While everyone's digesting that, we'll go back to item 16. 
And I'd like to ask Dr Pearce and his Mr Newman and team to the front to um, take us through the paper and I'm hoping we may get a bit of a pricey report from HBRIC chairman on state of play, etc. Um, as well. So welcome, gentlemen. Now, Dr Pearce, you have to leave us at 3.30.